if you have ever considered setting up your home lab, you might have gone through the very fundamental question. Is it worth to run your own apps at your home? At the surface, self-hosting app sounds like a very cool idea if you have concerns about your data and privacy or just if you want to play around with self-hosting. In this video, we are going to explore what you need to know before you start this journey. Self-hosting application comes with its own set of challenges that you need to consider before you start this process. There is a reason why companies spend billions of dollars just to maintain their apps. So it's not an easy task. One small mistake or overlooking a minor issue could cost you your data. So it is important that you do things the right way. In this video, we are going to take a look at the five reasons you should consider when you start this journey. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. The first and foremost thing about self-hosting is the need for complete security of your server. If you can't self-host properly and securely, my honest advice is to simply not do it. It will cause more harm than good. There are a couple of aspects of server security. The best scenario will be to never expose your server to outside internet and just use whatever services you want locally. It will reduce your threat surface significantly. Make sure that there are no open ports on your router or your server which could compromise your server security. This works fine and is the most secure solution but that also means that your services will be concentrated locally and cannot be used outside your local network which is not a practical solution for a lot of self-hosting people. The next best thing would be to use encrypted communication with a VPN. This means setting up a VPN application at your server. There are a lot of options available for this. A couple of most important and commonly used solutions are OpenVPN, IPsec and WireGuard. I have already made a video doing a comparison between WireGuard and OpenVPN. You can check out this video to know more about it. My personal favorite is WireGuard which is much faster than the other VPN protocol. Setting up a VPN server at your homes means that you need to open some ports on your router which is another threat model that you need to be careful about. Another solution which is being used quite often is Cloudflare tunnels, which basically means that all your communication is routed from Cloudflare servers. Even though this communication is encrypted and Cloudflare has no idea what data is being transferred, I personally don't like this option, but for others, it may be a convenient solution. This also means that in order to be able to connect to your home server remotely, you are dependent on Cloudflare to work properly. If the Cloudflare servers are down, you likely won't be able to connect to your server. The last option to access your server safely is to use a service called Reverse Proxy. A reverse proxy is a server that sits in front of the web server and forward client that is the web browser request to those web servers. Reverse proxies are typically implemented to help increase security performance and reliability. There are a lot of advantages of using reverse proxy which includes encryption, load balancing and blocking unauthorized access. One of the most popular reverse proxies for self-hosting applications are Traffic, Nginx Proxy and Caddy. Among the three, Caddy is the simplest to set up. Traffic is really geared toward production level servers. I think we have discussed enough security, so now let's move on to the second challenge. But before we proceed, kindly take some time to click like and subscribe to stay updated on self-hosted topics. The second thing you need to consider is the cost. Self-hosting applications isn't cheap. If you plan to have a decent setup, it might cause a dent in your wallet. Self-hosting is what I call addictive. First you buy one server, then some networking equipment and before you know it, there is a garage full of equipment. Although it really depends on the person, you can set up just a single nook and call it a day for your home lab setup. But most often than not, you will have multiple machines running 10 gigabit ethernet network to your home. And networking equipment isn't cheap either. 
there are two types of cost one is the upfront cost of the server and another one is the maintenance cost over years you will have to manage the server which will require constant updates to your hard drives etc while self-hosting always try to stay within your budget it's very easy to go overboard quickly and i am guilty of that as well always make a rational decision between your self-hosting needs otherwise you will have equipment at home that you won't ever use and will likely go to waste before we proceed further let me know what kind of server are you using at your home third point to consider is the power consumption this is quite relevant to the previous point we discussed but i want to focus on a couple of things here servers are typically sized for peak capacity performance and reliability Self-hosting means that it will probably run 24-7 and electricity isn't cheap either. There are a few things you can do to reduce your power consumption. The first thing you can do is to virtualize your services that will reduce the need for dedicated hardware for each service and will reduce the energy consumption. You can virtualize with either virtual machines for system level virtualization or with Docker which virtualizes services with much less overhead. Mechanical hard drives make a significant portion of energy component of the whole equation. Replacing them with solid state drives can reduce power consumption as well. Use lightweight distros instead of the one designed for end users. I personally like Debian with no desktop environment. When it comes to self-hosting, we tend to ignore power consumption. One would buy a cheaper older hardware thinking that it's a solid deal for the price. But the reality is that the older hardware is much more power inefficient and in the long term it costs more. Newer devices like Intel Nukes or Raspberry Pis are much more power efficient. Another thing to reduce power consumption is to put your server in a place where the ambient temperature is much cooler. If you have an old laptop at home, you can repurpose it as a much more efficient home server. Since laptops are designed to be power efficient and their internal battery can act as a backup power as well. The fourth factor to consider is data management. While self-hosting, it's always a plus point that you have complete control of your data. And it sounds pretty promising, but it comes at a cost. You have to manage your data properly, otherwise you run into the risk of losing data permanently if you are not careful. You need to have hard drives configured with RAID to ensure that you have a local data redundancy. You will also need to have a proper backup method scheduled so that in case of an issue, you have a chance to recover your data. There is a very popular backup strategy called 3 to 1 backup. That means that you should have at least 3 copies of your data. Two local but on a different drive and at least one backup off-site to ensure that you always have access to a working backup. Always make sure that the backup method is working. If you can't restore your backup, then your backup strategy is worthless. If you have TBs of data on your server, keeping and maintaining multiple backups is going to be costly. Instead of using full backups every time, use incremental backups. This should save time and disk space and also reduce your costs. And lastly, I want to discuss the technical know-how you need to have in order to manage your server. If you are self-hosting, you will need to dedicate some time to managing your server and fixing stuff. This could be a great learning experience as well. I enjoy it most of the time, but it can be frustrating as hell. Self-hosting is pretty fun and the idea of hosting your own data and not depending on external services is pretty rewarding. Always take the previous points into consideration while starting self-hosting. With this note, we come to an end of this video. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe down below and see you in the next video.